Okay, so in order to create our own virtual server, we're going to be using this Amazon EC2, and we're going to launch an instance. Now, what does an instance mean? It's just another way of saying virtual machine in the cloud, basically. So it gives you a bu bunch of different instance types that we can do. There's Linux and Windows down here. So then there's different flavors of Linux. We're actually going to choose for this demonstration just a very simple one. Um, we'll just go ahead and we'll choose this 32, let's do the 64-bit one. You can do the 32-bit one if you want. It's going to be a little bit slower, though. Actually, looking at this side, we're going to go back. We're going to do the 32-bit the one. The difference between 32 and 64-bit are beyond the scope of this. Um, the reason I just picked the 32-bit one is the different one, they have different amounts of memory. They have different types, like you know, big or small. And uh, the 64-bit one right now, there's some limitation where it won't let you do a small one. So I want 1.7 gigabytes of memory. So I'll just go ahead and hit continue. And we'll come back to most of these things shortly. Default's pretty good for most of these. Now you're going to need a key pair, and this is uh, it's not too important to understand what they are right now, but basically it's an encrypted file, so you'll have to create one. You'll create and download your key, and it'll download a little file. But it's a file that um, but basically where they're going to give you the password through it. So I'm just going. I already have a key pair, so I'm going to hit continue. And don't worry about this part yet. I'm going to, uh, I'll just keep in my default security group. Then I go ahead and I click launch. It tells us it's launching. So now, if we go to instances, you're going to see that my Windows instance is currently pending setup. Now as we sit here and refresh, Eventually it gets out of default and it turns green. And this is the point where we need our, we right click on it and we say, okay, I need the, uh, I need the password to get into it. Because it just created a Windows in the cloud. So if I click retrieve password. Now for the Windows, you have to wait about 15 minutes before it will let you do that. So we're just going to go ahead and wait. But for Linux or other ones, it's usually instant. Okay, so it actually hasn't been 15 minutes completely, but eh, it's about how long it's been. So now we're going to click connect, retrieve password, and you need to go find the file that you down that you created when you created your key. And so I just selected it and it loaded it into there, and now I say decrypt password. And so uh, you want to make sure you copy these. I'll paste them into a little notepad here for a minute. And we'll also, now you're also going to want this thing. This is your DNS entry, so this is how you can access your server. That, that's, your, that's your internet address of your server right now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our server that's now running in the cloud somewhere. So to do that, I'm going to go down here, let's go down so you can see the Windows thing. I'm going to go Remote, Desktop Connection. Bring this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in that. That's the address of where my server is. Hit Connect. Now, this right now, it's probably not going to let me connect. And this has to do with the security policy. And I wanted to show you this in case you run into it, because this is a very common mistake. Okay, we got a nice little error saying that it can't seem to connect to it. So what happens is, let me bring this up here. Let's see this again. I'm um, going to close this, and we're going to go to security groups. And I believe I put this one in the default group, so let's go ahead and... Um, Look at these different rules that they have. Oh. Okay, so we go into the, uh, we're in default, inbound, 
And what you have here is you have the different ports. So each IP address in the internet, you, you have 65,000 ports. Well, 535 as well. And what this saying is allow, allow all traffic on those ports, so everything, if it's from that source. And what we need to do is we need to say RDP, and we say add rule. And what that actually did is it opened up port 3389, which is the port that uh, this uh, remote software works on. Just kind of like um, HTTP, the internet works on port 80. But uh, anyway, so it's just another port. So now that I've applied the rule, and now it's going to accept that port from um, anywhere, 000. So now when we click connect, it's going to ask us what we want to do. So before I do that, though, I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to change the display so it's a lot smaller. Now let's hit connect. Then this is where we use that administrator and the funky password that Amazon created for us. Now you don't want to lose this stuff. So now we'll go ahead and we'll paste it. Okay. Um, this is not working. Okay, I finally accepted it that time. So it's uh, just go ahead and click yes for this. It's just creating a secure connection. And you can see here that it's uh, loading the desktop on this remote server now. And it uh, finally loads up here. I'm saying this is a public location. So if you can connect to your remote server that you've created in the cloud. Now keep in mind, this is costing you, I don't know, like 10 cents an hour or something. So you don't want to leave it on forever. And I'll show you how to turn it off. But you have your own little server running the cloud somewhere.